Hey guys, I'm getting on here to make a video for Life of Fred. This is the beginning algebra, and this would be equal to algebra one. Um, my eighth grader is using it currently. I am getting into our eighth year of homeschooling next year. So what happened this year is we were using CTC for algebra one for my eighth grader, and he was probably about three quarters of the way done with the program, and he told me he no longer wants to do anything online and he wants to do it completely offline. At this point, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a whole another Algebra One program. He has used Life of Fred in the past and he loved it. And he actually continued to read their pre-Algebra books in his spare time. So it was just an easy decision for me to decide on getting the Life of Fred book for him to finish out his Algebra year. And he's been happy with this. He is currently using this as a standalone program, not supplementing it with anything. Right, let me show you guys a closer look at the book. So lessons, I would say take him maybe about 30 minutes to get through. So CTC works where these are the steps that you need to solve the equation, and Life of Fred is completely different. It has the students think about the process of solving them, and there's a lot more word problems in here. So this is all about the book. Here are the contents. It's broken up by chapters and by lessons. We go through one lesson a day. I'm gonna flip through the contents a little bit if anybody's interested in what exactly it covers. I feel like it does cover everything that a regular Algebra One curriculum would cover, but it's a completely different focus in the way it teaches it. And then at the end of each chapter, there are some review questions that last several days. And that's one of the big differences between this and the earlier books. I'll show you guys that in a second. So this is chapter one. There's a little section to read. It has a storyline that integrates equations and story problems into it. So after you read the sections in the beginning of each lesson, there are or problems. It's always called Your Turn to Play, just like the earlier books. And there's a few questions and intermissions sometimes to explain things further. And I would say the beginning of the book is kind of like pre-algebra concepts. And then after the questions, the solutions happen to be on the next page. I will sit with my son and ask him the questions so that he's not cheating and looking at the solutions. Or sometimes I'll put a piece of paper over the solution side. Here's lesson two, chapter one. There's a little bit to read. And then your turn to play, which are the questions. And I feel like these questions are enough because each lesson will ask the same question over and over, so it's kind of like spiral method. And by the time they get to the end of the chapter, they already know how to do everything pretty well. There's the solutions. And I love how the solutions are broken down so well and explained. At the end of each chapter, there's something that they call bridges, and these are going to work different than the earlier books. It says at the end of each chapter are three cities. They are not tests. There's a lot of math to learn in the first year of high school math. The cities offer a much needed chance to practice your algebra. Do not skip any of them. So the way they worked the cities in the earlier books, where they would have you just do the cities up until you felt like your child had a good grasp of it, and then you can skip the rest of it. In this case, they don't want you to skip them. Let me show you some of the cities. This is a city at the end of chapter one. There's a lot more questions here than at the end of each lesson, but there is no reading to do before it. They just jump straight into the questions. And then here's the answers. This is the second city. And then the third city. And by then you're on to the next chapter. My son is currently on page 114. The whole book is over 400 pages. It's actually over 500 pages. Our plan is to keep on working through this whole math until maybe July, and then he's gonna take a summer break. We kind of homeschool year round, so this would be normal for us. Between this and the CTC, I feel like he has a really good grasp on algebra concepts, and I feel like at that point he'll be able to move onto geometry next year with no problems. 
I have noticed going through this that Life of Fred does integrate a little bit of geometry into the algebra, which I like. So he'll have a little bit of exposure to geometry before he actually gets to it. He's enjoying the stories. He really likes the break from the normal math that he's been doing. As far as this being a standalone, I feel like it could be to the right student and the right learning style. Here is an example of chapter 12. This is towards the end of the book. I feel like this gets into some Algebra 2 concepts at this point. Here's your turn to play. So you can see it gets pretty advanced by the end of the book. There's some of the answers. It's dealing with inequalities. Here's one of the final bridges or cities just so you can get an idea of the advanced concepts at the end of the book that it goes over. And there is a little bit of geometry over here. There's some more geometry. Absolute value. It goes over some more advanced equations. And at the very end of the book, it really breaks down how to solve different equations. So it's like a quick reference. And of course, if you were using this, you could always go online and find videos. So that's pretty much it for Algebra 1 from Life of Friend. And it's called Beginning Algebra Expanded Edition. My son's enjoying this for now. We do plan on going to a more traditional route for geometry. Hope you guys found this helpful. Bye.